flooding. Danger of flash flooding and low water crossings at night. The situation people are dealing with, there are homes, the water is very close. Water was up to the Stevie Ray Vaughan statue. We had, we had water everywhere. I believe it was probably in this range. We get flooding real bad. They had to literally break the window so they could get their kids out. The goal of Planet Texas as a whole is to look at, you know, essentially how to make Texas resilient by 2050. And that can be seen in many ways, right, from the technical solution to hazards to the engagement with the communities and the stakeholders to the contribution of data sets. The goal of our flagship is to help Texans better prepare for climate-related natural hazards, flooding, heat, wildfire. Part of the logic of the flagships were to have an interdisciplinary set of leaders. So I'm a sociologist by training in the School of Public Policy. I study river networks, so physical networks that you can observe from space, from the field and everything else. And Patrick studies governance networks. So in thinking about the network of people that essentially, for example, are behind the governance of floods or other hazards. But really what we're trying to do with this flagship is to make communities more resilient now. And, and this is a hard one in academia, but the measure of success for me in this project is to see actual change in these communities. How do we uh, provide the type of information, the type of data that can advance community well-being um, that can increase investment from state policymakers, from city policymakers, uh, into these communities that have been historically underserved. This neighborhood is just a park uh, that the city bought the homes mm -hmm. after the floods. And a lot of the people were displaced. They, some of them left out of town. Others are still here. All the people that, you, that used to live here that I know that have shared their stories about their losses. Preparedness that works, everybody needs to be connected. Not uh, public works doing something and watershed doing another thing. They, everybody needs to be connected. There's the things we work on that are very theoretical, but there's also direct products that are being used on the ground. And so with flooding, for example, the best thing to think about is, you know, this application that is called Pin to Flood, which essentially is being prototyped now and is going to be distributed um, in the state that allows the maps that we produce to be in the hands of the emergency responders, the firefighters. So, so this Pin to Flood gives first responders a common operating picture about the, thr the flood threat that they're they're uh, dealing with. Imagine being a first responder at two in the morning, you're in a neighborhood, there's flooding, but you can't, you can't really tell because it's dark and it's raining and you don't know the scope of the problem. But if you could drop a pin at the edge of the water and it would return that flood footprint and you could see the number of houses that are inside of it, you would instantly know the, the scope and magnitude. Then you know how to get in, get out, to evacuate people if you needed to, or if it's safer for them to, to, to stay at home. If I have a prediction now, can I give you within seconds a prediction of where the extent of the flood is? And we can do that. Is it the best solution? Is it the most accurate? No. But it's good for the, for the use that we need right now. Right now we're having more conversations about preparing for the future. Nonprofits and city agencies are working together, developing a workflow to integrate this flood modeling, social vulnerability, governance information, uh, and expand to other cities uh, and communities across Texas. Over the last couple of years, we've certainly developed some really good rapport, really good trust uh, in how we work together, ultimately to advance community well-being.